Well, uh, good day, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, the day of Shopbot training, learning about textures and toolpathing today. i um, going to do it a, a few different ways. A lot of what is going to be uh, happening today is uh, going to be uh, somewhat experimental, uh, just to see uh, what happens on the screen, uh, explore uh, a couple of the tools that uh, Vectric has given us for creating textured um, patterns both in two dimensions, three dimensions, and also gonna take a look at the methods and possible ways to be able to toolpath uh, the, the patterns based on what uh, drawings we have, uh, just using a couple different tools, a couple different uh, bits and forms that uh, gonna change the way the overall pattern looks. So, Again, this is going to be uh, somewhat, you know, experimental as we're going through here, just uh, as we're going to click some buttons and see what happens. Um, if you have any questions uh, through the process, uh, please use the chat window, ask the questions, and uh, we'll answer them as, uh, as we go along. Uh, and towards the end, uh, we'll open up everybody's mics and allow for some uh, a lot of the unmute and mute to be able to ask the questions uh, that way. So first, we're just going to start off with um, creating a new file. Um, everything that we're going to start off with can be done in both VCarve Pro and Aspire. A uh, little bit towards the end, we're going to look at some of the um, three-dimensional clip art and tiling toolpath that uh, is provided, uh, but we'll take a look at that a uh, little bit towards the end. So I'm just going to start off with a new job. We're going to go single sided. Uh, I'm going to make the X 24 inches just to give us some width uh, on the screen to be able to play with and look to see what's happening. Zeroing to the machine or the table surface. Um, you know, it really doesn't matter. Again, it's all about uh, where and what you want to do. If you're working with depth critical stuff and not ever cutting all the way through, then you may want to zero to the material surface. If you are doing a lot of through cuts and the surface depth does not matter a whole lot, you may want to set in reference to Z0 off of the table surface or machine bed. Uh, but regardless, whatever you do here, do the same thing at your machine. Uh, we have the same thing for the XY datum position, which is the lower left corner, which is uh, the lower left uh, here. And again, whatever you set here on Aspire or VCarve Pro, do the same thing in at the machine. So I got it on a, uh, a higher resolution here. Um, we'll see how that plays out for the 3D uh, toolpathing or the 3D uh, clip art that we'll be bringing in. But first we're gonna start off with uh, some two dimensional um, items and just take a look at that. So we'll say okay to that. And now we have our blank slate, uh, blank job uh, to create some uh, textures and patterns. The first tool that we're gonna take a look at is using this vector, or vector texture um, to create a repeating pattern um, and we're going to be able to use that to uh, create um, somewhat of a random uh, type of pattern. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the functions uh, used for that. So just coming in and clicking this button without changing anything at all, um, we're going to hit preview. That then fills the entire job uh, with the pattern that we have uh, entered in based on our parameters here. So we're going to slowly take a look at each uh, one of these and uh, modify them individually so we could just you know, experiment to see what happens uh, when, when it changes. So first, we're just going to take a look at what happens if we change the angle from 0 and we're going to make that 90 and clicking preview. We can see that whole pattern just shifted 90 degrees. Now we haven't actually created any of the vectors yet. We're still in preview mode. It's not created until we click OK. So anytime we make a change, you could just simply click preview. So we're going to reset that back to zero. And again, preview. And there it is. Um, the spacing. See what that looks like uh, if we increase that uh, from 0.5 to, let's just say 2, give it a larger number. 
So what this is doing is um, setting two inches from high point to high point. And let's just verify that. So I'm going to say OK to this uh, just so I could get to the uh, 2D view to be able to use our measuring tool. I'm going to measure from the midpoint. I'm coming over to measure the uh, midpoint here. And yes, so we're from high to low, which is that two inches in that Y direction. Um, you can see uh, listed over here. So once we've left and does that texturing toolpath, we're on to the drawing side. We could always go back in and modify this pattern simply by selecting it. As you see, it is completely grouped together, selecting it and coming back in to our texturing toolpath and it is this items that we're gonna change. So again, let's change this to a 45 degree angle, apply, and now that has uh, been stretched across. So we're still able to modify and make changes to one, even though we clicked okay um, and moved out of this texture window. So resetting back to zero, and apply. And we're just going to maybe tighten this down a little bit to one inch, 1.5. Now the variation, let's just take it to the extreme to see what happens and we'll select preview. So this is the height spacing uh, between, so we're at max spacing of one and a half. So the peak to peak is not going to be any greater than one and a half. And then the uh, variation is the midpoint or the next line um, here. So again, from this point now to the max point of that peak is not going to be any more than one and a half with a, uh, this kind of a random variation here. It is also creating a pattern that is centered on our job that is also um, able to be tileable. Uh, so we could do an array copy of this. Um, and we could see that by the bottom section loop is matching up to the top section here. Um, and we could quickly see that. I'm just going to say OK to this, closes the texture window. And just do a sweep select of all of these objects using a array copy. And I want two in the X and two in the Y with a zero gap, and we'll simply say copy. Uh, it did a mirror on the right, uh, but we've had some issues with the height. So it's not quite a tileable in the Y direction. It was in the X, but not in the Y. So I'll just do a control Z. With this being selected again, coming back into this texture tool path, and just, we're gonna play around with this. So the amplitude here, let's see what happens when we increase this number. You can see that those waves get much bigger and much higher. Now the wavelength, let's uh, bring that smaller. And we can see that they just kind of shrunk, uh, shrunk down and became uh, much tighter. So let's, uh, it's a little bit bigger, and at this point, let's just uh, explore some of the uh, tool pathing that we might be able to do to create a, a pattern or uh, maybe a textured panel or a texture that we're able to use for a back uh, of a sign. So we'll say okay to that. And the pattern or the textured tool path, um, First, we're just going to take a look at toolpathing this for a, just using a profile toolpath. This is basically just going to follow the lines that we have drawn. Uh, we're going to specify the depth to uh, 0.1. We're first going to come in and select a quarter inch ball nose, choosing to toolpath this on the line, and you're going to come down and select calculate. 
this point, we're on the 3D view and just going to click the preview visible toolpaths to see what this is going to get us. Well, somewhat interesting. Um, we have a lot of flat high spots here where that quarter inch cutter just wasn't able to quite get to. Um, let's see what it looks like with a slightly bigger tool. So we're gonna reset this preview. Change from a quarter inch to a half inch ball nose. So we're getting a little bit more overlap, um, kind of an interesting uh, swoopy type of pattern. Still got some peak uh, flat spots. Not so sure I'm crazy about that method, but that's all right. Uh, we could just come back into our 2D view and we can make modifications to our pattern here. So uh, let's, with it selected, again, coming into the textured tool path, I'm going to decrease the amplitude uh, of this, bringing it down, selecting preview. Let's just pull that a little bit closer together. See, that's what happens when you click cancel. So reset those again, bring the variation down, amplitude. Selecting OK. So now we have modified, even though we have this toolpath here in this list, um, it is not it's somewhat disconnected from our actual pattern that we have. Since we did make modifications to this and it's just gonna regenerated it, this toolpath that's in the list is no longer associated with the, the vectors. We can still use this toolpath simply by double clicking it and reselecting the vectors. Reset this preview and do a preview of visible toolpaths. Somewhat, maybe a little bit more interesting. Uh, we are able to vary the depth or the changes of, of this. Instead of using a profile toolpath, let's take a look at what we have for this texturing toolpath. So let's just do a uh, tile it this way so we're able to see kind of both at the same time. Just going to simply delete that toolpath and reset the preview. And we're going to take a look at the texturing toolpath. So some of you may have used this already to create somewhat of a uh, hatchy uh, type of uh, chiseled uh, pattern where it just you're able to use all of these texture settings here to simply you know calculate and it produces um, you know something like this. We are able to base this off of using a selected vectors. So this is what we're going to take a look at now. So I'm going to take the selected vector using the same half inch ball nose that we were using for the profile. And we don't have as many 
changes uh, that we could make here. It's really just the cut depth and the minimum depth. So starting off with, I'm just going to change and bring that minimum depth all the way over to the left side, which is uh, setting it to the same depth as our 0.15. Doing that just to show at this point, the toolpath that was generated is really nothing different than what we were doing with the profile toolpath. Uh, where it is staying at consistent depth all the way through our project. So to add a little bit of change to this, and we can preview what that looks like, just to show that nothing has really changed. If anybody is wondering why it's taken my computer some time to uh, preview uh, and run that toolpath, it is uh, coming up to toolpaths in the preview quality. I have it on the maximum, uh, which is uh, you know very slow. Uh, but by doing that, it uh, gives you a much cleaner uh, preview of what uh, you're going to get. So now we're going to come back into that texturing toolpath and. Again, there is nothing different between what we have shown here uh, using this texture toolpath versus the profile toolpath. Uh, and the only reason for that is because we had our minimum depth set to zero. Or our minimum de depth set to the same as our maximum cut depth. So let's uh, change that uh, some. Let's bring that slider off to the right a little bit. Now, preview. Now we're going to have some variation in our depth as it's uh, cutting across. So let's go ahead and preview what this looks like. We are using a ball nose, so we may not be seeing as much of a depth variation as we may if we used a, a V-bit. Uh, so we're going to attempt and see what happens uh, with the V-bit uh, next. So we see a little bit of variation here, um, but not, not a tremendous amount. So let's come back into this texturing toolpath. And instead of selecting a ball nose, Come up and select a V bit. 90. Bring that farther off to the right and select again. Resetting the preview. Remember to reset the preview every time uh, you go to rerun or review. So now we could see the uh, varying and changing of the, the depth, a little bit uh, clearer, see a little wider on the V um, than we are here. And it just kind of changes the uh, variant of the pattern. So as I mentioned before, when we come in and make a change uh, to the texture or the pattern that we have here using the pattern tool and we re-preview, change something, or um, make a modification, it disconnects it from our toolpath list. So coming, selecting this, coming back to our preview, changing that around a little bit. Now what I'm going to do this time, rather than, oh, actually I have been and just haven't used it. So we have the option to be able to place this pattern on a layer. So first thing we're going to do is uh, you would give it a layer name. Um, and let's, before we even go with that, I'm just going to change that layer name to layer wave pattern four. 
I just say wave four, and we will select preview, then apply. So now what that does is we can see that it made that layer a current layer, and it placed all of those objects on that layer. Now, what we're going to do with the texturing toolpath, rather than saving and recalculating it based on our selection of the layer, we're going to use this option down here for selector and say that I want to include, I want to associate with the drawing on all vectors that are on wave four. And nothing is being selected because we have the option set for closed. Uh, we are open vectors there. So I'm going to set that option to all open vectors. And we can see once I did that, that automatically became selected. So by having it associated with that toolpath, anything that is applied or newly drawn items on that layer this toolpath, when recalculating, will automatically select objects that are on that layer. So let's just go ahead and click Calculate, reset the preview, and do a preview all selected. So we're going to do uh, and just see what happens when we do a combination of uh, vectors or combination of patterns on one, on, say, top of one another, uh, just to see what maybe a slight angle change uh, was going to do. So remember our layers, we could come up here right now. Um, we only have vectors on wave four, layer wave four. I know that because of the little symbol that's laying right there. And that allows us uh, me to just come in here and delete the other layers uh, to try to keep it somewhat clean and organized um, so we can understand what's going on. I'm going to come back into the uh, texturing toolpath, but I'm not going to have the object selected this time. I'm going to make sure it is deselected because I want to keep this drawing there. Just want to create a new pattern over top of it. And this time I'm going to change the wave pattern to be at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to preview this to see what has happened here. Um, we are pretty high in our amplitude there. I'm going to decrease that. Just a little bit more in preview. There we go. So we are uh, kind of overlapping these vectors, and we can see this lighter blue. Only this time, I'm not going to keep it on layer four. I'm going to give it a new layer name of layer and select preview, then close. So at this point, it allows us to be able to shut off the wave four toolpath and only work with the objects that are on layer wave five. So I'm going to come in and do the same basic toolpath uh, that we did for the texture one on this texture uh, wave five layer. So instead of coming in and setting that all up again through our texturing tool pass, I know I want the same parameters as the previous one. So I'm just going to right click here and select duplicate. And then I will do a rename. So you can see they're still both so associated with that first wave. So I'm just going to do a rename, calling it wave five, doing that alone is not doing anything to the tool passes. It's helping us keep straight and organized on what is doing what. So now with that changed, right click and uh, make modifications to this toolpath by editing it. And I'm not going to select the objects. I'm going to come straight down to the selector. And I want to select all objects that are not on the wave four, but on the wave five. That becomes selected. Simply click Calculate. We will reset the preview. And we'll do a preview of the visible toolpaths, which is Wave 5. So the same basic toolpath, but they're separated on an angle. But now we still have our other toolpath that has been calculated here that is uh, 
at a horizontal. So let's just see how that looks like previewed on top of what if we cut both of these. So I will again just preview the Now, somewhat of a mess, um, not really what I was hoping to see, but what I want to come in and see what happens if we change that back from a ball nose to, or a V bit to a ball nose. Reset the preview and do a preview all tool paths. And after this, I think what we might get a better effect uh, in this case, if we keep a more of an even pattern uh, rotating and also at a consistent depth. Um, so we're still probably gonna get somewhat of a mess. A little more interesting. You can see that maybe as a wall panel. All right, so we're going to kind of clean our slate. Uh, just going to go file new. And I don't need to save those. And this time we're going to create um, a more uniform spacing of uh, pattern. So we're going to say 0.75. See what happens there. I'll reduce this to one. I don't want any variation. I want to have an even, steady and increase that pattern. Let's make it an even three. I set that to wave one. Let's do a preview once more. Just say okay there. So that is on layer wave one. Gonna come right back in here and set us at an angle of 45. View and change this to wave two. So with this done, uh, let's just see what happens, not changing the depth. So we're just gonna use a standard regular old profile tool path, selecting one, gonna cut on the line. And we do have some flat sections. Um, since our spacing is uh, wider or bigger than the diameter of our ball nose. We're just going to see what happens when we now select in profile toolpath the opposite. Maybe not so much. Uh, but hopefully you're kind of getting the idea how you could play with different texturing patterns and uh, to change things around just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to delete the one tool path here. I'm going to try one more uh, pass at this and see what it looks like if we had a mirrored image of this directly on top of one another. So this time I'm just going to sweep select both of these objects and create a profile toolpath. All right, now we're going to take a look. It's a little bit better. Um, but now what we're going to do is uh, take a look at how we might be able to simulate a uh, wood grain uh, type pattern uh, that you see uh, used on exterior signs. 
And, uh, so we're going to take a look at that. And uh, to do that, we're just going to do a sweep select of all of this and start fresh. Still using our option here for the selected uh, pattern, but this time we're going to say if it's a sign that we have, uh, you know, text in with a uh, border. So I'm going to select a rectangle and just offset outwards 0.7. And we only want to have that pattern within the uh, rectangle here. So I'm going to have this inner one selected and do a texture of this. Now bring our angle down to zero, our spacing. We're going to pull that down a little bit tighter. Let's see what happens with the point one. Amplitude also uh, smaller. So again, we are consistently uh, the same. Let's add a little bit of variance. Maybe increase the spacing by 0.2, not too big. Change the wavelength a little bit. So we're still somewhat looking fairly too clean for what this would be for wood grain. Um, not quite, quite it, but we have this option that we haven't looked at or explored yet. This is uh, what's called noise. Um, we're going to first take it to the extreme off to the right to see what it looks like. It now takes those lines and kind of gives them a little bit of a jaggedy uh, type of uh, pattern. Um, that's, I think, a little bit too much. So I'm going to reduce that uh, back halfway. And it's looking maybe a little bit better. I am going to bring that spacing just a little bit closer together just by uh, removing that and making a point 0.1. There we go. So we'll select apply, and this time I'm going to put that on a layer wood grain wood. So we'll say preview, then OK. So at this point, um, we kind of got a mess of a, a node situation here. Um, so those are a lot of straight lines um, and kind of really jagged, um, sharp turns. So we want to be able to modify that just a little bit or correct that. Um, so I'm going to have the whole object selected and I'm going to come over to the fit curves uh, to the selected vectors and set this to the Bezier. I'm going to select preview. So it just kind of smoothed uh, a lot of this out, but it still kind of is giving us this weird, um, maybe uneven pattern. So I going to say OK to that. And at this point, we're going to come over and create a profile toolpath. I'm going to delete the Control Z is your friend. Um, <laughs> I'm going to come over here and select uh, this toolpath and delete the one that we have there already. And now notice what has happened. Um, since I have kind of node edited that through the fit curves to the vector, they're no longer grouped uh, together. So I'm going to do a sweep selection to be able to still have that grouped together. And I'm going to zoom in and select only that outer rectangle. Now there's a couple different ways that I could have uh, done that. Um, I could have also right clicked and used the uh, selection option here and to be able to do it uh, based on the layers. Uh, so I could do select all the vectors on the current layer, which is the wood layer. And when they're all selected, I'm just going to type the letter G to group this together. So at this point, we're going to come over and create the profile toolpath. Change the cutter to a 90 degree. I'm going to go with a little bit wider 90 degree because I'm going to change that depth to be 
doing a reset of our preview and preview all this toolpath. So again, this was just a profile toolpath. Um, so it's going to be fairly uniform, probably not going to really give us the effect that we're after here. So uh, everything is set to one depth. Um, you can kind of maybe see that it's uh, trying, we're trying to simulate uh, wood grain uh, there a little bit. But let's see what happens rather than using a profile toolpath. Come in and use our texturing toolpath. Coming back to the 2D view to select here and use the selector as the pattern. Change that cutter back to our 90 degree. Cut down to a 0.15 with a uh, pretty good depth variance, and we'll say create. So reset our preview and do another preview of what this is going to look like. So we do have some varying depths, uh, still pretty uh, ridgy and. Uh, pattern there. So it could be that we have uh, gone too deep. Um, we might want to not have as much of a variance. Pretty good depth variance. And we'll say create. So reset our preview and do another preview of what this is going to look like. So we do have some varying depths, uh, still pretty uh, ridgy and uh, pattern there. So it could be that we have uh, gone too deep. Um, we might want to not have as much of a variance. back into this tool view and let's see what happens and what it looks like with a ball nose rather than a V bit. So we'll go with a with a larger ball nose first and then we'll come back and see what it looks like with a So maybe a little bit better uh, looking closer to what a, a wood grain pattern might uh, might be. Uh, you could definitely modify this a little bit uh, through um, the shape of our created uh, patterns. So now um, one challenge that, that we have uh, with uh, say if we wanted to create um, you know, text, you know, this is a sign. So we wanted uh, some sort of a logo or a pattern uh, inside of what we have here. So let's just come over to um, our 2D draw. I'm gonna change our layer because I don't want to have anything else on our wood layer. I want to keep that separate. So we're able to completely work it separately. And I could even come in here and shut that off. So let's just see what happens when we come in here and um, put some uh, text here. I'm just going to put my name uh, in here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Selecting here and would center this. Um, center within that boundary there. So some might think that uh, what you might want to do right away is just do a V carving of this. Do a calculate and do a well it's kind of there but not not really um, you know some of the depths that we've already modified and changed 
um, is uh, not quite there. Um, so we have to think about how this textured toolpath is being applied to our overall um, drawing. So first, we're going to come into the um, layer and turn our wood pattern back on. And what I want to do is have the pattern not intersect with or come in line with um, our text itself. So to do that, we're going to use this uh, function over here that is trim selected vectors. So it is going to uh, trim the objects to the last selected vector. So I'm going to select come here, select my name, come in, and I want to clear everything that's inside of that. So there we go. So now I've just removed all of the vectors inside of the, the text or the pattern or the sign, logo, whatever it, it is. And come over and just do a recalculate. So what it's telling me here is that the uh, vector two, um, it, it's changed. We can't use that anymore. So again, um, this is the reason why we use the layers. So I'm just going to come in here, come down to the bottom, use the selector to select all the objects around the wood. So we'll reset this preview and um, I'm going to run the, let's run the V carving pattern first. We still have somewhat, a little bit of an issue uh, that's going to happen here. Um, we'll point out, uh, try to point out what's, what's going on here. Um, so it's, it's there. Um, we can see it's a little bit different. Um, there is some change that has happened, but not, not really. Um, I'm going to come and select the V carving and also do a preview of this. So it's a little bit more crisp, but not, not really. And I'm going to explain what has happened here. Um, the texturing toolpath is bringing the that half inch ball nose or half inch ball nose, the center of it up to the end of the line right here. Um, so that means that if we are 0.15 deep at this point, that ball nose is coming into our letters. So there's a couple ways that we could manage this. Um, I think one way is a little bit more correct than the other, uh, but one is a little more time consuming than, than the other. So we'll take a look at both of them. Uh, so first, um, I just want to see what happens if we use this ramp the starts and endpoints. I uh, just want to see what that is going to do. So reset all the preview and preview only that selected uh, path. Now what this should do is uh, kind of ramp up and pull down um, at the start and the end of the vector. So at the start of each vector, the tip of the bit is at the surface of the material and then ramping down into the material. See, it is uh, not encroaching as much as it, it was. Um, so that maybe helped a little bit. Still got the edge of the uh, bit here uh, that encroached into the letter A. So it didn't quite work. Um, so there's a couple things that we would have to do. Um, and what we want to do is prevent that bit from coming anywhere close to the edge of our text. Um, so to do that, we want to be able to offset and have to know what bit we're going to be using first. So selecting the text here, and I might have to ungroup it, uh, but let's see if it allows us to do it. I'm going to offset outwards by the diameter of the section of ball nose that we're going to cut. So it's kind of hard to describe here, so I'm going to quickly draw this out. So we're going to take a look at this texture toolpath, and our uh, max cut depth is at 0.15. 
So what that means is if we just draw out a circle here with a ball nose of half inch. So I want to draw that as a diameter. It's making sure that it wasn't a half inch radius. So uh, the diameter of 0.5. And I'm just going to draw a line out from bottom here. And anybody that is a great mathematician is not going to have to do what I'm doing here because you'll just know what it is. Uh, but now I'm going to take that line and offset it upwards. Um, or to the left in this case, since the starting point is here, left is to the top side. I'm going to offset that upwards by 0.15, which is our max depth. So now what that means is the max width that we're getting on any one of these scallops here is only the distance from This section here. So now we could come in and use our measuring tool and measure from here to here and we're 0.45. Um, so that's what we're going to use for a offset of the text here. So we're going to take here and come in here and offset outwards by 0.45. And now with all of that newly selected offset group together, just going to do a G to make that like one item. And now selecting the two. Again, let me uh, come back up and use the selection of the current wood coming in and making the selection based on the current layer. We'll group all of that together. Just did that to make this selection easier. Going to use this tool here and select everything with inside. Well, it's giving me some issues with that. Uh, and mainly, I see we are multiple selections here. So let's see what happens when we delete and remove some of that. So I'm going to again turn off that layer. To where we only have one selected vector. All right, control Z if all of that does not work. Um, scissors is always a good one, but that's not quite working because those are grouped together. We'll ungroup and basically you could use the uh, scissors um, to remove all of the objects that's within um, the area here. Um, and what you have to do and what we'll just do a couple of these so we can't uh, take all the time to And by doing this is uh, preventing the bit from getting anywhere close to the actual text that we are going to uh, V carve in or even pocket around. Um, so this is also the case where we could uh, do a pocketing uh, toolpath and um, that's where your start depth would be used. So if we pocketed this area out, all of this area out first at a depth of you know, a quarter inch, we could then use a start depth of a quarter inch. I'm sure some of you are out there watching, yeah, there's better ways of doing this. I'm certain there are. Um, and if I wasn't live right now, I would be investigating uh, a little bit more in depth than why that uh, clear selection didn't uh, quite work, uh, but we pretty much got around to the outside. 
of everything. So now I'm just going to do a sweep select uh, to remove everything that we did not want. And notice that I am doing it in, when I have that sweep select from the right, nothing is getting selected. But if I go from top to left, I get uh, a selection. So knowing how to do a, uh, the direction of the sweep uh, is important to know uh, and very helpful because I'm able to grab that line right there without doing a, um, zoom in to uh, select that. All right, so uh, for the most part, we're fairly clean there. Uh, coming, close this texture tool path. Even though we had this set up, this associated with toolpath was not selected. So having that associated with it will automatically reselect everything that's on that toolpath. So now we'll preview. No, I should have reset, so I'm just going to hit stop, do a reset. So this method is going to make sure that we're not going to encroach into our sign uh, pattern uh, text or logo or whatever is on the sign. But it's also uh, going to kind of stop short uh, from it and not really give us the clean look that we're probably after. So uh, when creating a textured background or a pattern uh, background and putting objects on top of it, the, the best thing to do is use the inlay uh, toolpath um, to where uh, then you're able to completely do the texture across the whole board, cut out or pocket out the texture, the logo that you want, um, and then it's going to make it look more like the text and the texture is coming right up to a vertical wall of uh, the text. So you can see it's kind of there, but it, it's not giving us the same look, uh, but it did give us a uh, flat area to still have that um, texture or that V carving put in. So again, um, if anybody is interested when you were uh, you know, previewing and you click preview and it's like taking a long time instead of waiting hours uh, <laughs> for a mistake calculation to happen, there's a little red X uh, right down here that if you select that or click that, it just stops the preview uh, from going any farther. So that is a little bit on the uh, the 2D um, type tool paths, uh, hope, or, or textures. Hopefully that kind of helps. I know we jumped around and experimented a lot and uh, didn't always get the effect that we wanted, but that is the, uh, the beauty of the preview uh, to where you make the modifications that you want to see and um, preview it to see what it looks like. The one final thing that I wanted to show is a little bit on 3D um, clip art uh, in tiling with a 3D pattern. So it kind of works the uh, similar but different. Um, so I'm just going to do a sweep select to remove everything that we have here. I'm going to come on to the clip art tab. Selecting clip art and going to come down and use the texture area tiles. Um, so these are already predefined to be able to set up for a tiling toolpath. Um, so I know these ones are a fill tile, meaning that these are repeating patterns that can be used, uh, but the one that we're going to look at is the area tile. Um, so let's just scroll down and bring this in just once, um, could resize it, come into the modeling tab. I'm going to quickly take a look at this create textured area component. 
So clicking on here now allows us to do a, a sweep uh, or a duplicate of what we want. So selecting here is just going to fill the whole job with the ran random pattern of that. So it just kind of duplicated that across there. So it's not too exciting uh, by itself. Um, so let's do a control C um, and undo what we got here. And take a little bit of a look at what that is. Um, best way to do that maybe is to look at just a basic um, Animal uh, 3D. Let's bring this one in. Um, once it is kind of drunk over, it starts to download it. Um, and then uh, when it's ready to be downloaded, it tells you. So then you're seeing, able to say OK and bring it in. And right there, I got a little bit lazy. Um, Everybody may be familiar with that screen right there. Uh, so coming into the clip art, animals, use the So we're not going to spend a lot of time. We did a little video on this a uh, couple weeks ago. But we're just going to show how this uh, tiling toolpath uh, functions. So just doing nothing but importing that and doing a, an apply, we can see how that is uh, brought in. Uh, now we have options here to be able to just set the spacing. Um, in both that, and we could also shift it uh, just a little bit. So I'm going to shift the Y up 50%. So you can see every other um, object is shifted upwards. Then we have these buttons here uh, to where we could kind of rotate every other one in, in different directions. So that is. Um, just wanted to show on a simple object like this that is clearly able to see a right and a left. So with that uh, done, uh, let's go in and file new. And this time we're gonna use the tiling area toolpaths and let's bring this one in here, I'm going to resize this just a little bit, bring it smaller. Coming to the modeling tab and just quickly coming up here to the texture toolpath, not making any changes, but simply selecting apply. Just kind of stretches that out across there. So now let's see what we could do about modifying this. Uh, so I want to maybe uh, do a minus 50 here for the spacing. Again, we'll apply to see how that affects. That's all right. Let's do a spacing upwards, maybe 50%. And let's rotate here. And also, maybe that one. There we go. So just by modifying and rotating in different uh, patterns here, so we've uh, reduced the spacing of every other one by 50%, which gives us a 50% overlap, shifted the every other up 50%, and then rotated the pattern on the every other to the left. So. Let's just quickly take a look at what that looks like as a 3D pattern. 
I did a move rather than a rotate. So that is using the clip art pattern textured area tiles. Uh, so we're able to use all of these objects that are in this um, section of clip art is able to be used as a tiled um, area clearance or area uh, tile uh, or being able to use the tool for the create textured uh, off of an area component. So hopefully uh, that kind of shows a little bit about texturing. And um, that is uh, what we have or what I have for the day. Um, so I am going to uh, ask for questions uh, now. And if anybody has a question, uh, feel free to uh, you know, use the chat window um, to type in your uh, question. And uh, at this point, you should also be able to uh, unmute yourself to be able to uh, speak up and ask the question. And I should say, if the question, the question doesn't necessarily have to apply to anything that we showed uh, here today. Uh, it could be uh, on any question or topic that you might have uh, a, a challenging uh, with. All right, so uh, kind of reversing a three-dimensional object. Let's see if I can't uh, fumble around and do that. I, I'm certain there is a way. Uh, I'm not uh, quite certain if I'm going to be able to do it right now, uh, but I will uh, give it away, uh, give it a try. Uh, just coming in and On that, set to zero plane, and let's see. Yeah, first, just try uh, some of these. Um, there we go. Um, options right there. Uh, so we uh, created rather than a up, uh, we went down with it and it did a uh, reversal of that. So you did create a zero plane first, and then um, did the, uh, I'm not sure, I'd merge low maybe, um, or I don't know. But you can see that it did uh, uh, reverse that, uh, both uh, we can see that from the uh, 3D and the grayscale. The grayscale is a little bit easier to see um, that the uh, change uh, made a difference. Radial texture. I'm sorry, I don't quite understand that question. Um, uh, in short, even if I don't understand the question, I'm certain there's a way to do it. Um, I'm not sure if um, I get the question. So let me do a quick. So the pattern um, really is um, that you want to create is um, whatever shape you uh, design, uh, you are able to create, you know, a textured toolpath based on it. So if you're able to get a pattern to match uh, the uh, texture that you're after uh, as a visual two, two dimension there, you would be able to uh, create the uh, profile uh, just using either the profile on the line or the texture toolpath. I'm thinking you might be more of the uh, profile toolpath on the line. Um, there are ways of doing uh, hatching. Um, with um, the, the texture toolpath as well. So uh, let's just take a look at the um, area of clearance and uh, come down. Uh, 
and this one that was already brought in. I'm looking, I'm looking for the single one, uh, but there might not be. Oh, there we go. I was on the wrong button. There we go. So if we wanted a weave, um, kind of running the same type of pattern using our checkster, we'll just flip straight here to the 2D, 3D view so we can see what's going to happen. So I'm going to change that to a 50%. apply just so we can see what happens almost right and let's rotate these around and a shift of 50. Getting a little closer. So just by modifying in how that is uh, brought around, we're able to create a, uh, a weave type pattern uh, to this. Oh, an embroidery letter. So yeah, um, let's see, how would we uh, do something like that? Um, that's really designing it. Um, I don't know if there's a quick way to uh, break up the, um, the texture of a line. So basically what we would want uh, to do is break up this line as far as stitching um, here. Um, I don't know of a real quick way of doing that. Um, just do an ungroup or a convert that to text. Um, we might be able to do a, let's quickly draw out a circle. I'm just gonna go point one. And if we copy that along distance between copies, and this is maybe the distance between, say, your stitching, we could then go through and maybe trim away every other line. I'm certain there's you know, better, faster ways to be able to go around and trim this out using the weld, uh, weld tools. Um, and such. So once you get all the way around here, then we would be left with um, just the vectors that are hopefully um, going to simulate like a stitched uh, pattern. Definitely get uh, practice on zooming in and zooming out, um, panning around with something like this. So, and also get good with the undo and paying attention to what's happening there. So there is that. So what I should have done uh, before I even started was uh, set those all those circles onto another layer. Um, I wouldn't 
had to come through and remove them and do a manually select. There are gadgets out there um, that are able to automatically select all circles of a certain diameter. So once uh, you have the pattern that uh, you're looking for, you would uh, probably just simply do a profile toolpath. So maybe a V-bit uh, following on the line or a uh, very small um, diameter bit. So let's just see what happens when we go to preview this toolpath cutting at uh, six on the line. So the V-bit is uh, not quite it. Uh, we needed to space that a little bit farther or change the depth uh, to make it shallower um, to where we're just using the very tip of the bit. Um, also going to use a sharper angle of 60. So I don't know if that uh, answers the question about the embroidery, uh, but that's kind of what's in my head when you ask, uh, when you say that, like an embroidered letter. Um, all right, well, that is uh, going to end it for us today. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us.